around a motto. I might describe it as a mission, invest in the future, short the past, explain. Sure. Well, first, thank you so much for having me. And it's, it's so great to be here um, today. Capital Life for Kids is something that's very important to Honeycomb. We, we believe in natural, organic, scalable growth. And um, being here today really is, is, is on mission for us. Um, in terms of our investment strategy, investing in the future and shorting the past gives us a very wide lens. So while our portfolio happens to have a lot of software companies which are changing the world, um, including the digital disruption that we see going on across many, many industries, it allows us to also see who's not keeping up. And that is something that I think during the pandemic we really learned if you're not keeping up, you're falling very, very far behind. So there's a tremendous amount of dispersion in the companies out there. And not, so maybe not just falling behind, but DOA. Yeah. For sure. David, what are some of your highest conviction bets? Yeah, well, for us, the creator economy is something that we're really the focused on. creator here. economy. Yes. Um, you know, in today's world, uh, the idea of graduating from school and working for a nine-to-five job in a big company, um, that's not as appealing to young people. And there's an entire business that's becoming quite common, which is freelance. And so the freelance, there's, uh, they use companies like Fiverr. That's a portfolio company of ours. And in Five, F I V E double R. Right? Yeah, that's correct. Um, what this company does is it's a marketplace. So if you are a person that does web design, if you're a person that builds logos for websites, um, you know you might have worked for a company or you might have had a, a headhunter try to find you a job. But now with Fiverr, you can find a marketplace where someone's looking for that service and you can price your service. And having that matching buying and selling of your services allows you to choose to work on your terms in a way that hasn't been done before. And so this company takes a take rate. So um, if the job is worth $100, they get a certain percentage of that for every job that they fill. And that is something that is powering the economy. So then we think about that in the value chain. And well, what do those creators use? Well, they use companies like Adobe and Photoshop. And Adobe is a business that you look through an economic recession like last year, this is a company that's super double digits. And so when we find powerful compounders of secular growth, we love to invest behind that. You know, on our math, something like a company like Adobe will earn $25 a share of free cash flow in a few years. That to us looks like a very good investment. David, I looked at your holdings and I noticed two things were, if you will, well, they were not there. I won't say they were missing. But I didn't see any Tesla, mm -hmm. and I didn't see any crypto. How come? You know, um, for us, we're quite focused on the things that we are quite passionate about. And software tends to be the thing that is what's been most of our focus. Uh, I wish I had more bandwidth. I think those are amazing opportunities. Uh, but, you know, I think there's a lot of different ways to make money, and we're pretty happy with the way we do it. But I, I, I have my hats off to those, the, the sort of Tesla and what Elon Musk has built there. It's just not something that we spent our time on. Not just Tesla, but it's SpaceX, which is... Well, SpaceX is something we have some exposure to. Um, and that's something that I, uh, I first visited the company in 2013. And that was a, a very unique experience for me. I, I thought about that business, and... As a mission-based firm, this was before my, my, my predecessor firm, I was just so impressed if they built the reusable rocket, then the cost of flying a, a, a rocket would go down by 80% because you no longer blew it up. Like right now, you know, if you take a, a plane and leave JFK and go to Heathrow, the rocket blows up. But when you reuse it, then it has a lot of more use cases. You've probably heard the name Kathy Wood. She's built a reputation as the stealth-style champion if you will, of investing in innovation. But I also noticed there's not a lot of overlap between her portfolio and your portfolio. What's unique, what's different, differentiating about your approach? Sure, um, for us, we are very valuation sensitive. So while we may believe that a company has unlimited potential, there's a price at which we don't believe the risk reward is, is favorable. And so every position in our portfolio has a price target and a risk target. And so we want to put the skew on so that we have more than two to one upside. And for us, um, we're kind of second inning the seventh inning players. We're not going to be the first ones there, and we're not going to hang on for the last part. But if we can get the fat part of the bell curve, then on a risk-adjusted basis, our, our return should be better. Do you better. think that sensitivity to valuation is an important 
discipline and investing that people tend to lose in the midst of a bull market like the one we're, we're in right now? You know, in the, in the time that I've been doing this, uh, you have to pay attention to valuation. When, when you are not willing uh, to sell, that winds up being a very uh, a troubling outcome for many different investors. So f we have to have a game plan, and you got to stick to the game plan. But there are a lot of different ways to make money, and I respect all of them. It just what's worked for Honeycomb. You play in both public and private markets. Is the illiquidity of the private market worth the risk for a hedge fund? I would look at that question a little bit differently. Okay. Okay. Um, I am a financial analyst. I, I am. A, I am a player, coach, owner, and what I would tell you is I'm the Uber analyst and an Instacart analyst. So for us and you my still whole do team, the work, in other words. you do the work and. These companies are very, very large companies in the private markets. So to not look at them, to have blinders on, well then, I don't know if I'm really thinking about Uber's driver uh, you know, supply situation correctly, if I'm not thinking about what is Instacart doing and what's DoorDash doing and all the other companies. Just because they're not public doesn't necessarily mean we shouldn't be tracking them. So in our research process, it's very important for us to understand who are the disruptors and who's being disrupted. And that adds a lot of alpha to the short side too. Well. Almost everything we have talked about up until now is long. Let's talk about the short book. Um, this market, since the beginning of the pandemic, at least since the early days of the pandemic, has not been too kind to shorts. Mm. It, How do you operate as, 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 a, as an investor on the short side? Well, we, we certainly construct our portfolio in, in, in a way on the short book that might be a little bit different than others. Uh, about 80% of our short book is single stock shorts. 20% um, would be index hedges, and I would tell you that it, within the short book, we segmented as to one-third um, hedging some of our long books. So let's say we were long an advertising-based company, we might be short an advertising-based company. That, like a pair trade? But a little bit. It, it might be a valuation pair trade. We just want some protection in the event that things you know, go wrong. And, uh, and, and having that sustainability of returns is really important. Then we have one third that's secular shorts. These are melting ice cubes. I don't know what quarter they're not going to work, but I think then, and then there's the alpha shorts. Great companies just mispriced for the short term. 